Remote Rides. My name is Abhit and this is the Audi e-tron GT, one of the most powerful sporty e-cars that you can buy in the country today. And when I say sporty, it's properly supercar sporty, really, really fast. And if you want a sporty experience in a car, there are very few cars that can match this one in terms of experience. Now we're going to talk about the styling of this car, which by the way is phenomenal. But what we really have to start off with is its performance and it's powered by a 93.4 kilowatt hour battery which enables it to deliver 47 which enables it to deliver 475 hp of stonking power and if you mash the pedal for two and a half full seconds that can go to 530 hp in the boost mode i'll tell you what i was in dubai recently and I sat on some really really fast roller coasters and some roller coasters are the ones which take you up and then they throw you down but there are some others which accelerate you and this one from a standstill is properly properly fast as a roller coaster now the thing is that this car does not have an engine and what that means is while there are some other cars which have similar power on tap it does not need to rev to that level to give you that thrust and that means that from a standstill it really launches you into the horizon and the experience is a lot different from what you feel in a petrol car 630 newton meters of stonking torque and when you're in the boost mode it goes up to 640 newton meters and all of those figures really make this a properly properly fast car and if you want to go faster still you also have the rs version there you have 600 HP of power and the torque is rated at a beastly 830 Newton meters. Now, this power and torque translates to 4.1 seconds of 0 to 100 timing on this car. And if you're driving the RS, that one will do it in 3.3 seconds. Now, the good thing about this car is that the chassis, the suspension, the grip on all four wheels, thanks to Quattro, is magically, beautifully set up. And just to let you know, this car also shares most of its parts bin with the Porsche Taycan, which means that it is a properly fast car. Now, the power is put down to all four wheels, as you would imagine. This is an Audi Quattro car. It's an e-Quattro, which is an even more efficient, even more functional version of Quattro. Grips the road like a leech. You really can rely on the grip from this car. And what really aids it is its wide footprint up front you have 245 section tires at the rear you have 285 section and with the magic of quattro you really can show this car a set of bends it really goes around bends like a pro and if you want to play around a little bit with uh, the settings you also have drive modes so you can choose from efficiency comfort dynamic and individual modes and it also comes with an optional air suspension which can raise the ride height up by 40 centimeters so if you're going on a bad set of roads it can somewhat handle it of course it's not an suv but if you're just going through a rough patch this car is capable to handle it the steering to my liking is slightly quicker but the weight is really good not as heavy as the bmw's but this is a quicker steering as compared to what i'm used to with audis the suspension is really firm of course, it's a sports car, but it's not uncomfortable at any given point in time. Even on undulating surfaces, even on surfaces which are not really well paved or smooth, uh, on slightly jarring surfaces, there is not much vertical movement. And this car is very, very planted, but that does not translate into any discomfort inside the cabin. There is a little bit of tire noise, but apart from that, the cabin is really, really quiet. Now, these paddle shifters generally are for shifting gears and you would do well to know that this car comes with only two gears so the transmission here is a two-speeder and the first speed is for the launches and for the really really fast acceleration from a standstill like so and if you want to take the long legged approach where you want to be cruising the second gear comes into play and the motors are there at both the ends so that really means that you get a fantastic experience locomotive kind of an acceleration completely seamless there is absolutely no jerk there is absolutely no sense of the car going through gears it's just a linear very 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 progressive acceleration which is quite addictive to be very honest with you it's a fantastic experience and if you really want to be going really fast this car can really mask its speed like very few others can now let's 
just give it the beans from a standstill to give you a sense of what I'm talking about. Let's put the car in dynamic mode and launch it from a standstill. We'll put our left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator pedal. And three, two, one, here we go. And we are past 100. That's how quick this car really is. And I really believe that 4.1 seconds is an understatement. This car can probably do its 0 to 100 in slightly quicker time. The top speed here is 245 kilometers per hour, electronically limited, of course. But if you want to be going with the RS, that car can do 5 kilometers per hour more at 250 kilometers per hour. Now, apart from that, this car also comes with an electronic differential lock at the rear as an option, not as a standard fitment. The A suspension here also is an option. But boy, does this car really, really go. And it is as poised, as comfortable as speed as it is fast. So if you really want to buy something which is green, which is gentle to the nature and still goes like the stink, the e-tron GD has to be one of the best machines that you can lay your hands on at this point in time. Now the range here, if you go by the WLTP specification, is about 500 kilometers, which should translate to about 350 kilometers in the real world, even if you're driving with a heavy right foot, and which is good enough to take you to Pune and back to Mumbai, and that's not bad at all. I'll talk about the charging times uh, later once I start talking about the exterior, but. The real life range of such a powerful car is good enough and uh, even if you are making a trip which is 300-350 kilometers, uh, this car should be able to take you out of town and back. So that's really really good. Now the steering as I mentioned is slightly quick to my liking, would have wanted it to have a little bit of delay. So it is very alive and very very responsive and I'm pretty sure that I would really love it on the track but on the road I probably could have done with a little bit more uh, damping. Now the fact that this car does not have an engine means that there is absolutely no sound from the bay filtering in and which really makes the tyre noise and the wind noise get a little bit pronounced compounded by the fact that this can really achieve very very fast speeds in a very very quick time so you are really doing very fast speeds it masks its speed with its poise so you don't really know you don't come to realize how fast you're going and because of that reason sometimes you might want to think that uh, there is a little bit of tyre noise or even wind noise in higher triple digit speeds filtering into the cabin but such really is not the case this cabin is really very very quiet and the only reason why you probably might feel that it's slightly more pronounced than normal is that there is no engine here now the battery capacity as i mentioned here is 93.4 kilowatt hour which is shared with the rs although the rs has a faster discharge rate in favor of uh, more power and that's the reason why the range there the uh, official range there is a little less at about 484 kilometers it's not much of a difference but that car is slightly faster than this one all in all it's a fantastic car the only problem that you might sometimes face is that this is quite low but if you go with the optional air suspension which this car has then that should not be much of a problem also in terms of equipment there are some things which are missing and i'm going to talk about that in a bit but if you're really going to go for a car which is green and still goes like the stink in an uncompromised manner this car really really can check all the boxes and the range here is also pretty dependable so you will not get any range anxiety either now while the performance of the e-tron gt is absolutely astounding would you just have a look at this car it looks absolutely stunning and especially in this tactics green color it really really looks amazing now this color is a custom color and is not a part of the standard nine colors that you have and for such colors you will have to pay extra and a lot of stuff that you see here is an optional extra but let's talk about the design first and this car looks like a proper sports car very flat very low very wide and very very ready to pounce on the road those strong haunches are proper sport car -esque. and if you look at the front this grille here is a departure from the Audi single frame this entire thing is all black although you can have it specified in body color the four Audi rings that you see here can be specified in black and a bit of a shame here is the fact that this car does not come equipped with ADAS technology although you can see all the sensors here all of these are dummy and so is this little thing here which is the dummy for the 360 camera which again 
is available only as an option for a two crore car i really believe that's an omission and that at least should have been uh, a standard equipment the lights here are laser lights although these again are optional when you turn the car on or unlock it the lights here do a little dance and i really really love it the drls don't come on uh, in a traditional swipe out fashion they first go halfway and then go all the way so it really looks very nice although even if you're not going for the laser lights and just the matrix lights this dance will not be a part of the standard equipment and the swipe out drls as well as uh, the blinkers are not a part of the standard equipment so some of the things could have been uh, standard equipment and they are not and which is a bit of a bummer to be very honest but this car does look absolutely stunning it's very very wide it's almost five meters long and up front you don't have an engine bay you have a frunk and the control to open that is positioned in a rather odd place right here now you have about 85 liters of space here which can be used to put the odd haversack but nothing more than that hydraulic struts and this is the space that you have available although if you put the charging equipment in there is hardly anything left these little panels here come off and the Porsche lettering here should let you know that underneath this car is the Porsche Taycan this car shares most of its stuff with the Porsche Taycan which of course is slightly more performance oriented but the RS version of this car can go toe to toe with the Porsche Taycan both the cars do 0 to 103.3 seconds and the battery capacity performance most of the stuff is similar so of course that's the reason why you have this Porsche lettering here oh and you have some tools inside and on the other side you have this tow hook and Audi also gives you what it calls a tire mobility kit which allows you to inflate the tires in case there is a flat so that comes as standard equipment thank god for that then you have this triangle and as you would see here there is no sound deadening material because this car does not come with an engine and that material is not required so that's about the frunk and you also have this part of uh, the bonnet scooped out so it really gives it a very squat very sporty kind of a look now coming to the side this car really looks stunning it's a coupe shape although this is a gt this is a four door four seat car but it has a coupe like design comes with 20 inch really large wheels as standard up front you have 245 section tires at the rear you have 285 section bits and these tires are really really low profile you have air curtains to reduce turbulence and to reduce the uh, the noise that you get inside a very interesting piece here is this extended part of the fender which comes out and gives it a very angular very very square kind of a look up front and adds to the muscular uh, stance of the car these haunches as i mentioned are very very strong and this car really looks very very sporty the sunroof here is panoramic although this is fixed and not sliding type so if you want ventilation from the sunroof that's not going to happen the mirrors here are heated units and in profile you have this upswept look to the greenhouse area looks very very sporty and i absolutely love these wheels these are uh, very electric car -esque and still very very sporty the calipers here can be painted in red gray um, or blue as you want to specify it also the brakes are available uh, as ceramic options while the standard fare here is uh, steel you can have it specified in carbon ceramic bakes which obviously will cost you extra now this glossy black finish that you see here isn't standard fitment and is available again as you guess it right an optional extra and the ground clearance here generally is not sufficient for our bad roads but this car also comes with an adaptive air suspension which is an optional extra but once you have that system you can raise the ride height by up to four centimeters and then this car can take care of reasonably bad bumps without much of a problem this car comes with charging sockets on both the sides only one of the two sockets can be opened at any given point in time both uh, the flaps won't open and the charging time on this car for an 11 kilowatt 
home charger is about nine and a half hours to charge it from five to 85 percent if it's a 22 kilowatt ac charger it'll take about five hours and 15 minutes to charge from five to 85 percent however if you find a 270 kilowatt dc charger which you want in india it will charge from five to 85 percent in an astounding 22 minutes although you'll probably have to travel to germany for that the orvms are contrasting black you have these beautiful tail lights and they also come with those swipe out blinkers and the light is connected with this central line all of this is absolutely beautiful looks very wide very squat very very aggressive from the rear you have the e-tron gt branding here and this diffuser which is not a four unit this is indeed a proper diffuser you also get this active spoiler which comes on at 80 kilometers per hour and above now the boot here is a powered unit and all you have to do is swipe your leg underneath uh, the bumper to let it open and this is 405 liters of space although this car will come with a spare and after that there will hardly be any space left here although in this state you can actually uh, travel for a weekend it can swallow a big suitcase and a few smaller ones on the flanks also you have some space and uh, there's a bottle lying here and if you lift this flap there is some additional space here as well you have a 12 volt power socket here which probably would be used for the tire mobility kit in case you have a flat tire and you have these two buttons here you can simply put the boot down or if you want to lock the car you can use this button here as you would have noticed only the boot comes up it's not a notchback so the entire window does not go up like the audi rs7 all in all it's a beautiful looking car absolutely phenomenal and the only thing that i have against it is a few of the equipment like the 360 degree camera and ADAS should have been there because it's a very very expensive car and such things uh, ADAS as an option and 360 degree camera as a standard fitment should have been very very welcome very. so before we get inside let's have a look at the key and it's a very slim looking key not very flashy or very premium looking but it does have an e-tron branding on it and it has the lock unlock and boot release buttons on it and this car comes with a proximity sensor so you won't really have to remove the key from your pocket if you want to get inside the doors in my opinion could probably have been soft close but they are not and as you would expect for a sports car they are equipped with frameless windows so they look rather stunning when they're open now this panel here is all soft to touch very beautifully done and this car also comes with heated mirrors one touch down for all the windows and the child lock function is also there now also you'd really appreciate this geometric look that they have given to the door pulls and its surroundings and the entire panel is very 3d-ish looks very nice and very very beautifully done generally you have a very flat panel here but on this car everything is uh, very layered and looks very very nice although my complaint here is that you don't have a proper bottle holder and which will affect the practicality of this car as i mentioned the button to open the frunk is positioned here and the button for boot release is right here for the driver you have a two-way memory setting but for the passenger you don't and that again is a bit of a bummer for such a premium car there should have been a memory function for the passenger as well now these are the standard seats but if you so wish you can go for the sports seat which come with more adjustments and uh, are 16 way adjustable and feel sportier as well but again that is not a part of the standard equipment these illuminated e-tron gt scruff plates are standard though and they look rather nice as you would expect this car is very low slung and getting inside isn't very well suited for the elderly now as i mentioned before there's a very 3d kind of look to the dash and this panel here protruding out should give you an understanding of how layered this whole dash looks like you have a dead pedal there and all the controls for the lights are right here you also get all weather lights and the rear fog lamp now the thigh support here is pretty good and the bolstering is also quite aggressive although I have seen cars which come with even more aggressive bolstering and in some cars you can also adjust the bolstering uh, mechanically which is not the case here. 
a very interesting thing to note here is that the steering is electric but the controls are placed here and this is something that I really really appreciate because some of these premium cars miss out on an electrically adjustable steering but this car comes with it and that really is a great feature to have the steering also looks fantastic it's a d-cut flat bottom steering with three spokes and it has all of these satin silver inlays which make it look really really special along with this dimpled surface on the side uh, it's all leather and looks and feels fantastic these paddles as i mentioned are not for gear shifts now you get what uh, you call the virtual cockpit this is a 12.3 inch unit and 10.1 inch infotainment both these are very very high res and this thing here can also be customized and you can choose from classic sport or e-tron sport configurations for this virtual cockpit all you have to do is press that button and now as you can see the display has changed so you can customize that also this car comes with the 30 color ambient lighting as i mentioned before you can also raise the car's height if it's equipped with adaptive air suspension which is optional and in this case it is so if i want to raise the height of the car i can do that by pressing this button right here and then i can probably go on a slightly bad roads of course this is not an off-roader but uh, if the roads are not very good and if the clearance is an option then you can use this setting to raise the ride height by 4 cm. Now another great feature that this car comes with is a cleaning feature for the reversing camera and you can use this to clean uh, the rear camera if it's mucky. So that's a good feature although I would have wanted the resolution on this camera to be much better for such an expensive car. Does it look like the resolution that befits a 2 crore car? I don't think so. Although it does come with guidelines, uh, but as I mentioned, I would have liked this car to have a 360 degree camera and a better resolution to start with. Now you also get some info on charging and efficiency, there is not much here. And uh, you can look at the battery level, which is currently 88%. Among the drive modes to select from, you have efficiency, comfort and dynamic. Of course, when you go to efficiency mode, your range will increase a little bit and the ride height will come down to increase the aerodynamic efficiency of the car. Now let's have a look at the dashboard also, on top you have soft to touch materials and as I mentioned before this dashboard comes with a very 3D kind of a treatment. So you have this layered kind of treatment here and this central panel here is done in piano black and then you have this recess which has again these three dimensional shapes and then this panel again comes out and then goes in so it looks very modern, very futuristic, very angular and very very premium, looks very nice, quite unlike anything else that I've seen in any other car and looks very very beautiful. Uh, these materials probably could have been a little bit better but overall by the looks of it, it looks very very futuristic and amazing to look at. Uh, the AC controls here are all manual and I really love it that way although it's a three zone system but I like my AC buttons uh, to be directly accessible, not on a touchpad and that way it's very easy to use them. The drive select button is here, the parking sensors can be activated or deactivated from here, traction control can be turned off from here and this is the hazard light, of course this is the start stop button and the drive selector here is very different from what you have usually on Audi cars and you have reverse neutral and drive and when you press the P button here, it goes into the park mode. For the passenger you also have controls for volume and also to change tracks or to mute the audio. Two cup holders and this space here which also has this wireless charging pad here and a 12 volt power socket along with two USB type C sockets and some space which can probably swallow a couple of your wallets. Now to increase or decrease the volume, you just have to slide your hand around this dial and it's touch sensitive. So it takes a bit of time getting used to but it's very useful for the passenger. The glove compartment is not very big although it's illuminated but you don't have cooling function in this glove compartment. The sunroof as I mentioned is not a sliding type and although it's tinted, you cannot really open it to uh, let outside air come in so there is no ventilation uh, you have illuminated vanity mirrors on both the sides 
of course the IRBM is auto dimming and you have these two lights here up front now this car also comes with lane departure warning system and while that is not a full-fledged ADAS system it is a small subsystem of that and that's a bit of a respite a few other features that I would have wanted in this car but are missing include a seat ventilation system I would have wanted these seats to be ventilated also the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on this car are not wireless it would have really been nice had uh, those systems been wireless although you can connect your phone through a cable uh, for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay but the systems are not wireless also if I really have to be very very greedy I would want this car to have an HUD as well which is not available even as an option but overall it looks like a very very premium very futuristic and very well done cabin and inside the cabin you would really feel like you're sitting in a very very premium car very special car uh, especially the dash as I mentioned requires a special mention because it is quite unlike anything that I've ever seen so it does feel like a very special car and with the kind of go it has this show really complements it let's go at the back seat and see how much space we have there just like the front you have the frameless door windows here which look absolutely stunning you have that 3D kind of a treatment given to the panel as well just like the front and this beautiful door pull just like the front and just like the front you don't have a water bottle holder which again I think is a bit of an omission all the materials here are soft to touch very premium and again just like the front the seat is quite low lying so along with this low roof line you have to be careful while getting in it's quite low and for a four-door coupe like GT I think the headroom here is just about sufficient and for a person my height this is just about acceptable although if this car goes over a bad bump at speed I will bump my head with the roof so for my height it's just about fine but any taller than me which is 5 feet 10 your head will be brushing quite robustly with the roof line but for a car this class I think uh, the back seat is quite practical reasonably practical you also get this illuminated scruff plate here and what Audi have done is scooped out the batteries to allow for more room for your feet which is a great thing the seat here also seems to be scooped out so there is no dearth of knee room here the headroom as I mentioned is a bit of a problem could have done with a little bit more thigh support but the seats are beautifully contoured they are a little bit more upright than ideal for my choice although they are very comfortable but I would have wanted them to have a slight bit of slant to them but overall for a sporty car like this these are pretty practical seats and you also get a third zone for the AC you have the flow control here and you can control the temperature from here and you have this very nice armrest as well with two big cup holders now of course you won't want to see it a third person here because uh, this hump here is pretty big however you still get a proper three point seat belt for the third passenger along with an adjustable headrest so if you indeed have to put a third person in you can although it's not advisable at all because this middle part is quite raised and it's not suitable for the third person at all although on the two ends the seats are very very well contoured and very comfortable you also get a few amenities like these coat hooks which are there under the door handle as well as on the B pillar and you also get these reading lights isofix child seat mounts are there and knowing the kind of clientele this car is going to cater to I really don't have anything to complain about sure the seats could have been better more comfortable there could have been more headroom but we all know that it's a sports car and with that definition I really believe that it's a comfortable rear bench and no complaints whatsoever now the price of this car is 1.8 crore rupees ex showroom and in the standard GT trim it's quite a steep price if you really ask me because it misses out on uh, some equipment as standard fitment I really would have liked it to have more standard equipment but if you go to see there is hardly any competition to this car because the only other car that competes with this car is the same group company called Porsche and the Taycan is available for a slightly steeper price so if you're looking for something which is really practical in terms of its range can deliver astounding supercar like performance and looks like nothing else on the road there is hardly anything else that you can compare this car with I really believe that this is one of those cars which you can really go very fast in for very very long distances 
And if your requirement is not to travel more than 300 kilometers, then this car can very well be your statement of arrival. A thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable experience and a proper supercar performance from an electric car that can be used on a day-to-day -day basis. Kudos Audi for offering the state-of-the-art, top-of-the-line performance electric car to us Indians, not just in the form of the Audi e-tron GT, but also in the form of the other e-tron SUVs, which are even more practical. So if you're looking for a proper sports car, which has supercar-like performance, then this is one of the top dogs in the market right now. I really hope that we were able to answer all your questions about this car. And if you like our long format content, do hit the like button, subscribe to Motoroids, and do not forget to share this video with your friends and family who might want to know about this amazing car. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, this is Amit Changani signing off. Rev hard, rev free, and drive safe.